You have reached Atheist Republic voicemails. God may not be listening to you, but the citizens of the Atheist Republic are. Leave us a voicemail on AtheistRepublic.com for a chance to have your message broadcast to our followers worldwide. Send us your opinions, stories, advice, or concerns. Together, we'll build a platform for Atheist voices all around the globe. Hello, everyone. This is Dolly, and I was introducing myself the past few months as Dolly from Egypt, Alexandria. Now I'd like to introduce myself as Dolly, not from Egypt. I fled out of Egypt. I fled out of Egypt because of the abuse, because um, my family wanted to force me to marriage and check my virginity because my mom tried to kill me because my uncle wanted to lock me up and he literally bit me and my mom bit me and I was almost die. And it was just crazy thing that happened to me. I was almost die for real they bit me with a knife and I was really going to die in Egypt. So I fled out of my country. I fled out of my country. I escaped from my family. And now I'm in a country in Europe. And in this country, it's not from a Schengen area, by the way. It's in Eastern Europe. Don't be happy. Just in Eastern Europe. Former Soviet Union country. (laughs) So... Yeah, so I'd like to say my experience and share that moment with you all. When I traveled from Egypt to this country, it was a really hard experience. But once I land here, I shocked from the secularity and from people who are really doing whatever they want. I found out that they are selling beers, they are drinking beers at the street and to like um two couples are flirting in the street and it's cool just nobody say anything (laughs) back in my country egypt as a muslim country egypt when two people cuddling in the street or flirting in the street of course we will see an angry um, muslim man just attacking them and saying that you should not flirt in the street that's wrong you should not do that in the street it's forbidden it's it's really crazy but the life in egypt is not that safe because back in egypt I, i'm comparing my life in egypt and here i'm comparing my life when i was in egypt i felt danger i felt that i'm not safe and i was not safe actually i could not get out of the house i could not talk i could not have a job i could not do whatever i want i could not share anything in online about lgbt or about atheism or whatever it is but here in this country i felt like i can do whatever i want i can get out i can talk i can express myself even in a job interview i'll say an example even in a job interview an englishman my boss in the job interview he said that uh you're egyptian i said yes and he said you should you should have said assalamu alaikum because you're egyptian right you're muslim and i said no i'm not a muslim you should not assume because i'm from egypt so i'm supposed to be a muslim i'm an ex-muslim and he did not say anything he just smiled and uh continued the interview with me and yeah now when someone just assume that i'm a muslim because i'm from arabian country or a muslim country i'm saying no i'm not a muslim i'm ex-muslim so yeah nobody do anything if i said i'm ex-muslim no one heard me if i said i'm ex-muslim i said i'm ex-muslim and no one said anything and it was a really great moment for me because i felt in the first time in my life that i should not hide my identity or i should not pretend that i'm a muslim anymore in egypt um <clears throat> if you're if you're just just going outside no no friends or uh apply for a job or whatever you're doing the boss or the employer would just assume that you're a muslim and continue the interview or whatever it is or even your friends were like assume that you're a muslim and you cannot say i'm ex-muslim <laughs> you cannot correct them you cannot say it because you know the punishment prison and social isolation and bringing shame in your family or to your family it sounds crazy but 
I wanted to share this moment with you because I wanted to say that it's really great when you express yourself without fear. When you identify yourself without fear. That was the greatest moment in my life. Hello, my name is Kay. Uh, I am from Indonesian. Asian. And I am uh, an atheist. Uh, hello to all artists uh, from around the world. I am Bahram. I am using an alias name for security reasons. And I am currently living in Sherwin, Afghanistan. I am a founding member of an artist and research organization which has been active but under the radar for the past three years in Afghanistan. Around three years back, five of my friends and I got together and formed a group including both males and females. In that group, we were sharing artistic beliefs which we had in common, considering, uh, considering the very conservative and strict Islamic so, uh, society in Afghanistan. We couldn't openly talk about our beliefs in public or even among youngsters since we knew about each other's ideology. We could... Uh, easily have small get-togethers get and talks. <clears throat> Gradually, we thought of expanding our group and bringing others to join us. In our talks, we tried explaining atheism and atheistic beliefs to the newcomers as the majority of the people in Afghanistan haven't even heard of this term, let alone having no information about it. Moreover, we occasionally analyzed our community and uh, Islamic beliefs our society had. We also discussed about um, rationalism in our gatherings. Our group expanded in short time and we had meetings every two weeks or monthly. Later, we changed our group to an organization as our number grew. As far as atheism and Islam don't go side by side and according to the Islamic Sharia law, Atheists are infidels and subject to severe punishments and debt. We never thought of registering our organization legally with the government. We usually held our meetings in one of our members' house. In the recent crisis, the collapse of the government and arrival of the Taliban, a conservative uh, Islamic group, Islamist group, actually, Many members of uh, our organization have gone missing. In fact, we are sure of uh, one of them who was taken by Taliban around 20 days ago. And since then, we don't know about his location and well-being. We suspect the same for others who have disappeared. However, we also doubt the same might even have to, mm, that some might uh, have uh, start working with Taliban because we have had encounters with people who didn't agree with uh, what we were preaching in the past. Our identities are known to them and uh, ones who we have discussed our thoughts in the past. <coughs> Therefore, uh, since the arrival of Taliban, we are in the shadow and continuously have changed our stay in order not to be tracked by Taliban, because our community, unlike the Afghan Christian community and others, isn't uh, well known and established one we can't raise our voice too high our best choice is to write for the papers which are read by the pe uh, public so that um, they may be the voice we cannot be we call upon those who are working for autism to help us ev evacuate from afghanistan as we are at a uh, high risk <coughs> of getting caught and killed by taliban help us for keeping the voice and freedom of thought beliefs alive in the world for a more peaceful world. Please consider supporting us by sharing the podcast with your fellow heathens or donating by going to AtheistRepublic.com and clicking on support. Subscribe to Atheist Republic voicemails on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. And please leave us a review.